Hi, it's Paul from Model Build International. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The link is down there to subscribe. That way you'll be notified of all the future videos, be they builds, uh, reviews, or giveaways. Uh, today we're gonna have a look at a brand new kit from Flyhawk. This is a 1 700th uh, German light cruiser Königsberg. Königsberg was the lead ship of the Königsberg class of light cruisers. Um, these operated as part of the German Reichsmarine and later the Kriegsmarine. Um, the class comprised three ships, uh, Königsberg, Karlsruhe and Köln, or Cologne in English, uh, built between 1926 and 30. These ships were the first of the Reichsmarine with a modern cruiser design. Um, all predecessors were based on World War I designs. They had a, a main armament of uh, nine 5.9 inch guns in three turrets with 12 20 inch torpedo tubes. A notable design feature is the rear two turrets were offset to give uh, better arcs of fire. It obviously didn't catch on because nobody else used it. Um, all three ships were used extensively as training cruisers throughout the 1930s, going on many overseas cruises and were involved in the non-intervention patrols of the Spanish Civil War in 1936-39. After the outbreak of uh, World War II, the three ships laid defensive minefields in the North Sea, um, and they also action in the invasion of Norway in April 1940. Uh, Konigsberg was damaged by Norwegian coastal guns outside Bergen, and basically she just could not cope with 11-inch shells uh, coming at her and uh, she was sunk by British bombers the following day um, by Blackburn skewers as you see in the kit. Um, and then she was um, uh, uh, broken up uh, during the war. Um, her sister ship, the um, Karlsruhe, was also sunk in the uh, Nor Norwegian invasion. Um, Köln was the only survivor. Um, she operated the uh, Fletner FL 282 helicopters and experiment and provided gunfire support to German ground forces during Operation Barbarossa. Uh, returned to Norway in 1942 and ultimately didn't do much in the war at all. Um, stayed there until she went to Wilhelmshaven in early 1945 and she was sunk there in March by American bombers. But her guns were still above water, so she was uh, used to support def the defending German army against British ground forces until the final days of the war. Okay, so let's see what we get in the box. Um, to start with, this is the FH1125S kit. This is the special edition one with these extra parts. Um, metal barrels and uh, Blackburn skewers and some photo etch. Obviously the Blackburn skewers since those are the aircraft that sank her in Norway in 1940. So looking at the box, nothing on the bottom and on this side I always like to have a see what's here. We've got HMS Kelly 1940 um, and there's a new one of here, the Scharnhorst 1940, so that's obviously something they've got in the pipeline as well. So let's open up the box. First off, a picture of the, uh, the box art, that's her tied up alongside in Norway, and um, basically a bit of information about the ship. Um, like I said before in the uh, the intro here, basically built in the 1920s, sunk in the uh, in the Norway invasion in 1940, along with another of her sister ships. Let's look here. Instructions: uh, two sheets there. One sheet is for the Blackburn skewers. Just go through the instructions a bit more detail in there. Another one for the ship herself usual sort of long sheets that they do, folded over. Okay, so we've got um, uh, nine steps if you include the uh, the Arado 196 and you can do a full hull or waterline version 
we'll go through the steps one at a time in a little bit. And then we've got um, bags of stuff. Everything in its separate bags go together. A bag of superstructure parts. I think there's torpedo tubes there. Uh, the skewers are done in clear plastic. Here we have the extras in their own little pack. Oops. And a, a, water, a weight for the waterline version. And we've got the photo etched there. One, smoke here, one. And there, two, three sheets of photo etch. And there's it's like brass barrels and some brass rod of 0.3, 0.4 and 0.5 millimeter diameter. So we'll go through those uh, in detail as well. And there's the whole parts all tagged together. A uh, decal sheet, decals for the uh, for the skewers there as well as the Aero 196, German light cruiser Königsberg 1940, and Interesting to see if you could actually make this look like uh, the cowl's rear or the coal as well. So I'll have a look into that in a bit. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly open up some of these bags and have a quick look at some of the parts. Okay, so let's have a look at just a quick look at some of the parts. We'll have a closer look up when we go through the instructions. But uh, interesting to do these in clear parts. A lot of companies have done those basically means that the canopy can remain uh, uh, what clear. Nice detail on there, teeny tiny 1700 propellers and what have we got in here? One, uh, these are so these are the Arado 196s, I think. Just to no, nope, tell a lie. Nope, this is the skewers. There's six of these here. So those are the skewers. It's hard to read with this clear plastic. And then up to the usual uh, fly hooks, usual details. Propellers there. Lots of fine details on those. Looks like masts here, or parts of the masts. Again, finely detailed. Turrets, three uh, triple six inch gun turrets. See the plastic parts of there, plastic gun turrets. Hard to see with my glasses on, just wondering if the tips are hollowed. I'll have a look when I take the photographs, I'll be able to tell then. Um, Let's detail those. Anti aircraft guns here, perhaps. Yes. And we have some of the superstructure parts. Funnels. Funnels are hollow, molded hollow. One part. Nicely, nice detail plastic part for the uh, um, detail at the top of the funnels. It's probably reproduced in photo etch as well, to be honest. But this is what you'd get if you just got the plastic kit. And there's the Arado 196. It even has rivet lines on it, panel lines on it. Ship's boats. Again, Flyhawk have now taken to attaching the ship boats and the keel of the boats rather than the sides. Certainly makes life easier because obviously the kilo boat is never going to be seen. Um, detail on the forecastle of these ship's boats as well. Another threat of ship's boats. We've got down here um, it's like torpedo tubes, power vanes, uh, just like small guns, 20 millimeter sort of size. Ships searchlights, some big, super bigger superstructure parts. I see there's 
Uh, detail on the side of these superstructures, superstructure as well. Oops. Some of that portholes are in there. Looks like more torpedo tubes. Let's have a look here at the hole. There's the bottom. Strakes, nicely detailed. Armor belt is marked there. It goes together quite nicely. Square aft end of the ship, portholes, plating lines. That's nice and detailed. There's the base for the, um, if you do the waterline version, the end is protected. Uh, these, when these are wrapped up, they're all sort of wrapped up individually with on, on, within one big sort of wrapping. And here we have the Take a make of this here. There's the voxel. There's the offset to it there. You can see there's detail on the on the deck there. There's your the offset to it. More detail on there. Let's see how this all fits together. There you go, there's a, the basics of it. Straight in one fell swoop. It looks very nice. So, uh, at initial glance, it looks very nice. Flyhawk's usual attention to detail, lots of fine parts. Um, should look quite nice with just the plastic version. But then when you add in uh, this with the photo etch and the bass barrels, you should end up with something quite nice. And you also as a, an additional extra, you get the uh, six skewers as well. If you wanted to, you could mount those on uh, clear sprues, make a diorama of her in uh, tied up alongside in Norway. So let's uh, go have a look. We'll go through the instructions step at a time and have a closer look at some of the relevant parts from each of the steps. So a bit of information about the kit and the history of the Konigsberg um, in kit form. Um, the history of the Konigsberg in kit form is basically there isn't really much. All I can find is a single 1700th resin kit that was uh, done a little while ago. It's still available if you look around. But obviously this kit is going to be way more detailed and might end up being cheap. I think at the moment it's similarly priced. Um, if you know of more, please let me know in the comments below the video. Um, this particular kit, um, inside it we've got 265 plastic parts on 16 frets plus 8 separate larger parts, metal base plate, um, for the deluxe version there's another 254p parts on 3 frets, um, full sets of brass barrels and several brass rods, and you also get um, the, an aircraft for the Konigsberg, plus six uh, Blackburn skewers, decals for everything. Um, as for doing different versions, I think you could actually, for the most part, you could say this is any of the three ships. There's, there's nothing on the decal sheet to indicate that this is specifically the Konigsberg. Um, the only thing I say is bear in mind the Köln, uh, Cologne, when she was rebuilt, I think at the end of 1941, and her aerials changed. So after that, you'll need different aerials for that ship, but prior to that, it could be any of the three ships. And now we'll go through the steps of the build, having a closer look at some of the parts, the main parts in each step. There's not that many steps in the build. There's eight steps to build the ship. Step nine is building the Arado 196. And so step one is putting the two parts of the deck together, plus another couple of parts um, colour-coded instructions to make sure you get that put together right. A nice detail as you can see on the decks. Then we go down and look at step two. You have the choice of a full hull or waterline version. If you do the waterline version, obviously use the, uh, the metal plate there. Um, 
Nice detail on the side of the hole there. You can see the armor plating. Uh, there's even the eyebrows on the portholes. Um, there's detail underneath the bottom of the hole. Propellers go on as well at this stage. Um, Konigsberg was a, was a nice looking ship. She was actually pretty fast, although she did have a few handling problems. She wasn't so good at turns, especially high speed turns. But um, Flyhook have got some nice detail just on the basics of the decks and the main hull. Down the instructions, steps three and four. Step three is putting together the main and secondary armament. Uh, the turrets are nicely detailed. Um, it looks like the six inch plastic barrels have hollow ends, although it is hard to see. Um, but if you get the deluxe version, you replace those with brass anyway. Same for the secondary armament as well. Um, they look quite nice. Uh, step four is basically working at the forecastle and put the forward main turret on and some small parts at the front of the ship. Step five is um, building separate parts of the superstructure um, amidships. Um, so putting these together, there's lots of nice detail in these parts. Um, Flyhawks, uh, the level of detail in their mouldings is as good as any and better than most. Um, their portholes even have eyebrows on them. Um, in a lot of cases, for the deluxe version, I'd say you even have to sort of wonder how much extra detail do you need to add because their plastic kits themselves come with some really nice detail uh, moulded on them. But anyway, you uh, put the main superstructure parts together in, in step five. At the bottom of the first page, step six, um, basically where the parts you built in steps uh, three and five, sorry, step five, go onto the, uh, onto the hull. That's the, uh, the main superstructure. Quite a few ships, boats um, go on at this stage. Obviously you may wish to put them on later uh, yourself. Um, funnels go on at this stage. Funnels are side molded, so they're actually hollow. And there's some fine plastic detailing to go on the tops of the funnels as well. What else is starting to come together? Over the page, step seven. Um, the aft funnel uh, goes together along with the mast. Um, some other some aft superstructure parts, well, mostly actually midships. Um, one of the aft turrets goes on. Um, in fact, both aft turrets go on in this, in this step and step eight. Um, basically finishing the ship off, really, step seven has got quite a few bits go on. Step eight is just working at the very aft of the ship, um, putting the aft, most aft turret on, and then adding some, some more pieces. There's uh, colour coding where needed to make sure you get things right. Uh, basically by the end of this, uh, this ship is complete. Step nine is putting together the Aldo 196. Uh, the Koenigsberg actually carried two Aldo 196. You've only got one in the kit, but there's a good reason for that because she only had one catapult. The second aircraft was always uh, stored, dismantled in a hangar, so you'd never actually see the two aircraft out at the same time. Um, as per usual, these are very nicely detailed aircraft. Um, there's 10 parts if you build it with the wings extended. 12 parts if you build it with the wings folded. And bear in mind that's, that's 12 parts for a 1 700 scale aircraft. So um, some pretty fine work there. And there's some really fine detail on these things as well. At the bottom of the, uh, the back side of the instructions are the painting instructions and decal guide. Colors are called out in Mr. Hobby to me, a white ensign plus a couple of other languages, uh, Chinese and Japanese, I think. Uh, they're named um, as well, and there's a little colour um, swap as well. Reasonably straightforward colour scheme. Um, there's no sort of camouflage patterns. Uh, single colour deck, um, red below the waterline, grey above it. Um, yellow tops to the, uh, to the main turrets. Decals done by cartograph, um, so I don't expect any problems there. The only problem I'd see is the fact that even in one set number scale, the swastikas are in parts, so you have to put those together. 
Uh, if your eyes are like mine, it might be worth a Google to try and find 1700 scale swastikas that are all in one piece. Other than that, um, the, the kit in plastic um, is, is now complete and the painting shouldn't take you too long since it's a pretty simple scheme. And now a quick look at the instructions for the Blackburn skewers. Um, you can build them either with uh, wings extended, wings folded. Um, with wings extended, they're made of what, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. Wings folded, um, it looks like ten parts. Again, some really nice detail on these. Looking at these, the fact that you can build these with the wings folded, obviously you wouldn't do if you're making a diorama for this ship. Makes me wonder if there's not a um, an early war British carrier in uh, in Flight Hawks plans at some point. So we've got somewhere to put these skewers with their wings folded. Over the page, we've got the painting guide. Again, pretty simple. Called out in Mr. Hobby Tamiya, um, named and there's colour patches as well, and um, should say reasonably straightforward uh, paint scheme camouflage on the top. Um, the only hassle is going to be the fact it's a 1700 aircraft. Other than that, very nice. Okay, now we'll quickly go through the, uh, the, the PE parts for the deluxe kit. That's the extra 254 roughly PE parts. Um, it covers a lot of the usual things plus some extra bits. You get a full set of brass bowls, you get um, a rod to make the masts, um, anti-aircraft guns are replaced, um, a lot of the mast work is replaced, uh, funnels have a lot more detail put on them, the, uh, the catapult is replaced completely, uh, cranes are re is replaced as well, um, there's detail going onto the, uh, onto the deck that replaces deck detailing, um, usual windlasses, um, the ship's boats have photo etch added to them as well. Um, the uh, the mass at the end, at the rear of the ship, the canopies of the aircraft are replaced with photo etch. Um, so there's a lot of fine boat there. The, ship, the propellers on the aircraft are replaced. And some nice um, 3D renderings of what the ship looks like with the photo etch in place. But um, needless to say, the photo etch will certainly take the build to the next level. It'll look very impressive, a lot of fine detail to add. And it should look pretty good. And to wrap it all up, a, an overall conclusion. Um, just talking about the basic plastic uh, kit. Um, that's what 265 parts plus a few extras um, and it's really nicely detailed straight out of the box that will be um, a really nice kit and um, the main thing there is you wouldn't be getting any uh, railings or, or the, the basic photo edge um, but the level of Flyhawks detail, detail is up to their usual standards um, like I said earlier it's um, better than most and you really enjoy just the basic plastic kit. If you get the, uh, the deluxe version, you get another 250 odd parts of photo etch plus brass barrels and brass rods. So it's a bit like you <coughs> you double the size of the uh, the build by getting the deluxe set, but you do end up with something that's going to look pretty spectacular when you're finished. Um, it should do well um, because there is no other 1700th Konigsberg kits in plastic. Um, like I said, the only other kit is a resin kit and it doesn't have this much detail by far. So it should do, do well. Um, and I think there's uh, quite a few people have been waiting to see this one since it's, you know, there's never been any options before this, so I'm hoping it does well. The moment I can see it online as a pre-order for $54 for the basic kit and about $100 for the deluxe edition, um, I kind of suspect these prices will come down as other places, as things come in stock and there's a bit more competition in the marketplace. Um, so in all, should, um, it's a really nice kit, well worth your time and money, 
and many thanks to Flyhawk for sending along for us to have a look at.